This is News 10 Midday. Hi, everybody, and welcome to News 10 Midday. I'm Cornell Bernard filling in for Dan Elliott this week, and we've got Monica Woods filling in for Jennifer Smith. Hey, Monica. That's right. Hello. Good morning. And coming up on today's show, we often associate osteoporosis with women, but it also affects men. We'll be talking to a Sutter physician about this and taking your calls. 441-1010 is the number. And a new photo gallery is opening this weekend featuring Latino life in the United States. Find out more about this gallery exhibit coming up and the photos. We take a look at them. Uh, they are just beautiful. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And it's springtime. Time to update your wardrobe. But your pet's wardrobe? <laughs> That's right. We'll be checking out some pet fashions. I can't wait for that, and I see your pets <laughs> over there. You already got a sneak peek. Fresh, very unusual <laughs> outfits, and I can't wait to see it. And it's our Fast and Fresh series. Today we're making asparagus frittata. It smells good from here. Mm -hmm. First, though, uh, look at today's top stories. A college student accused in the death of her newborn baby is scheduled to appear in court this afternoon. Authorities say 20-year-old Gina Rose Grinzel hit her pregnancy but gave birth last Friday ending up in a live report. The suspect in a DUI death of a California correct correctional official is scheduled to return to court today. Scott Richard St. Pierre has already pleaded not guilty in the death of Jerry Walker, a correctional officer at Folsom Prison. Walker died in a head-on collision last month. Investigators say just three hours before that crash, St. Pierre had been in jail charged in another alcohol-related incident. He faces manslaughter and DUI charges. Some of the recent violence in Iraq has claimed the life of a soldier from Vacaville. According to the Reporter newspaper, the family of 24-year-old Casey Sheehan found out Sunday that the Army specialist had died in an ambush outside southern Baghdad. The rocket-propelled grenade and gunfire attack hit the Humvee that uh, he was possibly driving, claiming his life and seven others in his convoy. Four U.S. Marines were killed today in Iraq while securing checkpoints in Fallujah. Meantime, U.S. and Iraqi forces have surrounded the city as part of Operation Vigilant Resolve. ABC News reporting the Marines were fired upon today apparently by insurgents within the city limits. After returning fire, the Marines entered the city by foot in tanks and in armored vehicles. The recent wave of violence in Fallujah has many wondering if the U.S. will be ready for the transfer of power set to take place in just a few months. I stepped outside just a few minutes ago, shaping up to be a beautiful day. In fact, you were saying earlier the entire week looks really good. Monica? That's right. We are going to be warming up just a bit as we head towards our midweek and end of the week forecast. Today is still seasonable with highs near 70. You can see some of those clouds building currently. We started off with mostly sunny skies this morning and just a little bit more of that marine influence keeping the humidities fairly high at this hour as well as our uh, conditions in terms of our cloud cover. It's going to be still partly cloudy for today. Sacramento 53 degrees. The current reading Stockton at 57. Modesto 55 as well as San Francisco. Lake Tahoe currently 49. A look at today's forecast. We are calling for partly cloudy skies along the coast, especially we had some marine layer pretty thick in there this morning. Some of that breaking up at this hour. Highs will be right around 60 along the coast. 60s for the inland areas. 70s for the valleys with mostly sunny skies. We'll see occasional cloud cover. Foothills also with that same setup with highs today in the 60s and 50s for the Sierra with partly cloudy skies. Is there any chance of rain for that Easter forecast? I'll let you know that as well as how warm things are going to get as we wrap up the work week. That's coming up in the next half hour. Right now, back to Cornell. Okay, Monica, thanks very much. Osteoporosis is a bone-wasting disease that can not only affect women in later life, but men as well. Today, we're learning more about it from Dr. Mary Finnegan, a Sutter OBGYN. We're also taking your calls at area code 916-441-1010. Dr. Finnegan, thanks very much for uh, coming by tonight. Nice to be here. Uh, for those not familiar with osteoporosis, and a lot of us are, though, uh, tell us about how debilitating the disease can be. That's actually a good question. So about one and a half million Americans right now are affected by fractures due to osteoporosis. And the majority of those are women. Uh, but for women or men, regardless, once you've suffered a fracture, there's a 20 to 30 percent increase in your risk of death in the next five years over other people your same age. So people don't think about it as a life-threatening disease, but the changes that occur because of these fractures can be so debilitating that they do decrease your lifespan. Are we primarily talking about older individuals? The majority of people are over 65. Okay. In general, from the time a woman hits men menopause, which is around 51, to the time that she suffers her fr first fracture of the spine, you'd expect it to be about 10 years. For a hip fracture, on average, it's about 20 years. 
So most women are living to be greater than 70 years of age at this point in time. So for at this point, we're looking at 50% of women potentially will suffer a fracture in their lifetime. Okay, we have our first phone call. That phone call is from Jill. Jill, go ahead. Hi. I know that uh, calcium replacement helps with osteoporosis, and I heard somewhere that it would also help with uh, a weight loss program, and I was wondering if that was true. I think in general, uh, what all physicians will tell you is that a, a good balanced program of nutrition and exercise are going to help both with weight loss and with osteoporosis, as well as heart disease and diabetes. Uh, so it's fortunate. You have uh, a few things, good nutrition, good exercise, that can help prevent multiple diseases. Is it, I, I know there are a lot of supplements on the market and people say well you need to drink more calcium more milk I suppose right. in your younger years is to myth or is that entirely true and something all of us should be doing there there's uh, stages of bone growth so when you're young preteens the main job of the bones are just to grow bigger mm -hmm. and then after teens through your early adult years they're trying to get stronger um, it, so a thicker, denser bone. And then after that, you want to maintain that bone density. Throughout each of those stages, you need your calcium. Whether you can tolerate dairy, want to incorporate dairy in your life, or want to get it through other sources, you do need that calcium. And there's multiple supplements on the market. Foods uh, have many, uh, many different foods have calcium in them. And it just takes... question is, um, I'm 40 years old. I was just recently diagnosed with having, in the last four weeks, I diagnosed with having moderate osteoporosis in my spine and in my hips. And, it, you know, to me it seems like that would be rare because of my age, 40. How serious do you think that is? Okay. There's a few different risk factors that people have besides age. Uh, low activity level throughout their life, for exa example, in handicapped people. Uh, or in modern day society, people who are sedentary, watching TV, playing computer games, uh, low calcium intake throughout their life, hyperthyroidism, hyperparathyroidism, tobacco use, alcohol use. So there, your doctor can look at some of the lifestyle factors. Uh, corticosteroid use is another one, like prednisone. Uh, your doctor can look at some of your risk factors and help you determine if there's anything you can change in those risk factors or whether you just have to accept that you have that additional risk and then work to counterbalance it with other programs. We want to mention that you have a, a forum on osteoporosis coming up on uh, April 15th. And uh, if you want to register, uh, just call them at uh, 916 733-1765, and I think that's going to be a lot of important information for a lot of folks who just want to do some preventive medicine, I suppose, right? That's right. All right. Yeah, thank Dr. You. Finnegan, Finnegan, thanks so much for coming in today. It's nice right, to have be a good here. Day. Well, it is uh, time for fashion for man's best friend. The dogs hit the catwalk coming up. We're going to learn more about a special photography exhibit as well, showcasing Latino life in the United States. There's more to come on News 10. Stay with us. Hi, I'm News 10's Alyssa Lynn. I want to tell you about a cool new weather gadget we have. Check this out. It's our new desktop weather system. News 10 now. Check it, check it, check it out now. See this itty bitty screen? It brings you current temperatures, the seven day forecast, live Doppler, everything. And it's all right here. To sign up, go to news10.net and click on News 10 Now Desktop. And that's not all. If you sign up now, you have a chance to win season tickets to every concert at the Sleep Train Amphitheater. Get the weather right on your computer with News 10 Now Desktop. Taking a look at stocks on this News 10 Midday, the Dow Jones is down 21 points and the NASDAQ down 24 points. Well, it's time to break out the spring wardrobe. We're not just talking about your own wardrobe. We're talking about what's hot for our four-legged friends. Mike Chase joins us now from PetSmart with several doggy models and their humans. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Mike. Thank you for Welcome having me back on. to the show. You're talking about spring fashions. So why don't we bring out a couple of our models and you can tell us what they're wearing. Absolutely. Uh, we have Amanda and her Chihuahua Roxy. And they kind of have matching outfits. Absolutely. <laughs> we tried to do a little bit of that. Uh, Roxy has a pink polo shirt on, 
and she has also a fancy uh, collar that uh, matches uh, the ensemble. I mean, do they like wearing stuff like this? Yeah, um, a lot of the dogs actually um, get a little sense of, I mean, they step a little bit nicer, and it's, it's just a connection that the pets can make with the pet parent. So sometimes they just don't mind. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> All right, who's our next model? We have Becky and Peanut. Little and Peanut. Peanut has a, uh, uh, the, a standard T-shirt on. It has some uh, flower pots. And she also is showing off her nice little bow tie uh, collar as well. Aha. Uh -huh. So you, this ben. one doesn't necessarily have a theme so much. Not so much. Well, it's just some matching, co matching colors. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now these are small dogs, but you also have different sizes too. Absolutely. We've got a little bit of everything we hope okay. today. Okay. Uh, now we have uh, Shannon and Fozzie. And Fozzie is uh, so quite, cute. he's got quite a few um, different breeds in him, but he is a fantastic dog. Um, and he is showing, he's showing off the I'd rather be sailing um, outfit that we have. Aha. Uh -huh. um, for, you know, all of those sailors in, uh, in town. And these dogs are very well behaved. Well, we... Were they, they trained at PetSmart? Yes. Okay, so them. you're familiar with their oh, absolutely. attitude and everything. Absolutely. They've all been through at least one training session at PetSmart. Which I've already talked to you about with my dogs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get her there. Don't worry. Okay, so who's this? Well, we have Angie and Duncan. And Duncan is um, as her, uh, working as her caddy today because uh -huh. Angie is an avid golfer. And so Duncan is in his uh, uh, full attire for, for his caddy. Now, how did they keep the hats on, too? What, do you have a little string that it, goes under? It okay. is. It's just like a tie-on. It's, uh, But it works very well. And Duncan is one of our better-trained uh, animals. Uh, uh, Angie is actually a dog trainer at one of the Pet Smarts, and she works very, very long hours with Duncan. Gotcha. Okay, now all these outfits are available at Pet Smart, and do you have various sizes? or? Lots of different sizes, and we do have some, obviously, some... Uh, Types that aren't uh, displayed here today. Right, right. I saw the Harley one. We yes, <laughs> yes. For, for the guys, I brought the Harley one so that uh, the guys know they can dress up their dog as well. That's right. And, uh, in we the have, sidecar. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We have a whole Harley selection in, in almost all the stores. Well, and you also have something going on coming up in May. Uh, this is called the Fun. What'd you say? It's Fun. Uh, fun prizes and and uh, games. Okay. And um, we it's it's we, we used to call them Yappy Hours and. Uh, it, uh, it's two hours of just fun and games, and it's a chance for everybody to bring their pets in and, and for the dogs to socialize. It's called Carnival, and it's going to be happening May 4th from 6 to 8 p.m. at all seven PetSmart Sacramento locations. And it's just, like you said, a social time with your pets, so you can get more information at PetSmart. And also, you're going to have an adoption uh, We're having a, an adoption weekend, absolutely. And all of our dog uh, groups, uh, rescue groups, are going to come, come in through April 30th um, through May 2nd. Okay. And it's just going to be lots of dogs and lots of fun. All right, so if you want your fashions, head to PetSmart. All right, thanks, Mike, so much for joining us. Cornell, back to you. Hey, Monica, and thanks to all the dogs that participated today. Well, on the local art scene, there is a new photo exhibit about to open, which is uh, paying tribute to Latino life in the United States. It's called Americanos, and it opens this weekend. And John Castillo is the exhibit curator and photographer, and Cynthia Santana, Summer, that's correct, right. is the uh, director of La Raza Galleria Posada, which will host the photo gallery as well. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. have to say, John, the book is absolutely fabulous. Beautiful, beautiful uh, photos. Well, thank you for the compliment. You um, took some of the photos and compiled this entire book. Yeah, I don't want to even go there with respect to me. Um, okay. the, the, the real hero um, is actor um, and social activist Edward James Olmos, right. who spearheaded the project. Um, we just didn't find anything in the market that... Um, showed Latino life in a positive way. Right. So, um, We're going to take a look at some of the photos inside the book right oh, now. Great. Continue talking though. Okay, well, it was, um, it was a wonderful uh, project. Uh, we had uh, 32 photographers across the country. This photograph was taken by Gennaro Molina. Um, he used to be with the Sacramento Bee. He's now with the LA Times. Um, we had uh, photo editors from the Washington Post, uh, Chicago Tribune, um, and a, it was just a whole bunch of us that were spread out across this country. And our goal was to change the stereotypical view of how people see us. These are beautiful. These are um, anywhere from um, uh, politicians to uh, doctors, people in healthcare, people in the arts. Tell me about this photo we're seeing. Well, this one is. Thank you both for coming in today. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, it's time now for something fast and fresh from the kitchen, a recipe for California asparagus frittata. As uh, Monica puts her cooking gloves on, 
and uh, tries her hand at uh, whipping up some of this stuff. Coming up next on News 10 Midday. News10.net's seven-day forecast is brought to you by... Ken Jim Stevens was rear-ended by a drunk driver who was... Well, it's time for our fast and fresh cooking. And joining us again is Gwen Schoen this, uh, from the Sacramento Bee. Today, she's going to be showing us how to cook California asparagus frittata. And asparagus is in season, huh, Gwen? Uh, through May, the California asparagus crop. So okay. now's the time to get the really great asparagus, these nice, great big ones that are really tender and, and have lots of flavor. So this is a really simple recipe, and it's great for brunch and with Easter and Mother's Day coming up. This is a perfect thing Mother's to do. Mother's Day, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the first thing you need to do is steam the asparagus, which is very simple. The, the, the first thing you need to do is take off the tough end. You know, the, in the end of it is wooden. Do you the have other to, end is, though? You don't really have to, but it'll be... Um, easier to easier chew, to chew. Yeah. and the way you do that is just hold on to one end hold it in about the middle and snap it the woody part will come off the tender part oh. will stay and so you, no, it's these very simple steamed already or not? no these are okay. raw so you do this before you steam before you steam it. It. okay so it just snaps at just the right spot oh, so okay. um then you steam these i think it's easiest to do it in a skillet just add about an inch of water mm -hmm. lay the asparagus in there and steam them for about three minutes and they're perfect okay yeah because you don't so, want to get them too soft or no, else they just kind of especially for this recipe because it's going to be cooked twice so um stir fry a chopped up red bell pepper in a little bit of olive oil uh -huh. then add um a chopped up onion what kind of onion do you use? Well, depends on the season. I like those sweet onions that are in this early in the spring. The yeah. Maui and the the uh, yellow. Azalea. But they're um, sometimes they're a little white. Oh, okay. But these are Spanish onions because it's not quite onion season, sweet onion season yet. Oh, okay. So these are a little strong, but that's all right. I, I always onions tear up and I it's so, hard for me to cut onions. Um, this is uh, the cooked asparagus. It's already been steamed, and then I diced it in about one inch pieces. Okay. So I'm going to add that to my stir fry so that can be heating up a little bit while we mix up the egg part of the recipe so isn't that beautiful already oh yeah the colors are spectacular so we'll let and that it smells sit. really good too <laughs> then what you want to do um, to make the the frittata I have 10 eggs in here and you know someone else was asking me earlier if you could use um, egg beaters or some other egg substitute uh -huh. and you could sure um, yeah. it'll just taste a little bit different and it just use a whole carton a whole so carton of egg beaters. Okay. Egg beaters. Gotcha. One, one well, carton is like carton. egg is eight eight eggs. So okay. that would work. So we're gonna break all. The, make sure the yolks are all broken. Right. <laughs> then um, stir in about two tablespoons of diced uh, parsley. Oh, that's a good idea to do it that way because then it's evenly distributed. Right. Because I always have a problem with that sometimes. And you don't want the parsley to go into your stir fry because it turns bitter if it's overcooked. Oh, okay. Oh, so I didn't know that. Mix that in with the egg, and then. I have four ounces or about a cup of grated feta cheese. Uh -huh. This is the Mediterranean style that has um, uh, sun-dried tomatoes in it, oh, which has a lot of flavor. Yeah. So I really like that one, especially for a frittata. If you couldn't find that, could you maybe add a few sun-dried tomatoes you to could, it or something? Okay. Or just use regular um, feta cheese. Right, if you didn't just, like the sun-dried tomatoes. Just pick a flavor that you like. I just happen to like that one. So you blend that up, add a little bit of uh, salt and pepper. And how long do you, are you blanch or uh, cooking that? Just so it's in? kind of tender crisp. Okay. And, I was referring uh, to the vegetables. Mix this up a little bit. And then the only thing you have left to do is pour this mixture right into uh, your vegetables that are sauteing. It'll fill up your skillet. Use about a 12-inch skillet. And then just gently lift it so that the egg is mixed in well with the um, vegetables. And our... our stove is a little, it's off, a little crooked, off, but that's all right. <laughs> then just bake it for 20 minutes at 350 degrees, and it comes out beautiful like this one. It'll start to pull away a little bit from the sides, and the so wait, you leave melted. it on the stove, and then you no, put move it, in, it into the oven. Move now. it into the oven. Move so you have to you have to prepare this on an oven safe dish. Right. Okay. Uh, but most of the skillets, even the non-stick ones, can go up to 350. Okay, and this so, is only 325. Right. Okay. So put it in the oven for about 20 minutes and it's ready to go. Wow, yeah, it, it's really compact it, too. And you can serve it at room temperature or warm. And it makes a great um, brunch dish. Yeah, because it's not so messy either. Right. And you can do all your dicing and everything ahead of time. And it comes out similar to a quiche. So wow, that is so is. pretty with all the colors on beautiful? it and everything. And it has a great flavor because the feta cheese gives it a lot of tang and, right. and 
really is great. Now, this is going to be in tomorrow's uh, tomorrow's Sacramento taste week. section in the Fast and Fresh column. Oh, great! So asparagus is in season. It is. Get it while it's hot. <laughs> um, of course, if you'd like this recipe, you can also go to our website at news10.net or send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to Fast and Fresh, PO Box 10, Sacramento, California 95812, and right on the front, asparagus frittata. Thanks so much to Gwen Show for you. joining us That's again. Fun. We'll dig into this in just a moment. Right now, back to Cornell. You're going to save me a piece of that, right? Nope. <laughs> hey, sure. Come on. All right, thanks, guys. Well, still ahead on News 10 Midday, a drug bust at various Modesto high schools, but students say substance abuse isn't common among the majority. Lots of commotion this morning over who else but News 10 anchor Dale Shornack. Oh, thank you. Find out why everyone is just yeah. mad about him. That's coming up next. This is News 10 Midday. A drug sting nets more than 40 Modesto area high school students arrested for allegedly dealing. Some students and teachers are firing back, saying the incident is giving many schools a bad name. That story tops this half of News 10 Midday. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Cornell Bernard. Dan and Jennifer are both off today. A major drug sweep at Modesto area high schools has brought 41 arrests and sent a message to those who deal drugs on school campuses. There were between 5 and 10 arrests at each of 5 schools, but as News 10's Dave Marcos reports, some students and faculty today are saying the problem may not be as bad as it looks. He's live in Modesto. Good morning, Dave. A rough start to a new week of school for dozens of students at five Modesto high schools. Under arrest for selling controlled substance on a school campus. And I'll read you your rights. After a more than two month investigation, come the arrests, many for what's described as almost open drug dealing on school campuses. When we saw an increase of students under the influence of some very serious drugs. Even though the drugs involved range from marijuana to methamphetamine and even heroin, students say it's important to keep the bigger picture in perspective. We have 3,000 students, and with only said he was six bus, if I'm not mistaken, here in Modesto High, the percentage that we have is not nearly as much as you know. The, the, looking straight, the statistics would show you. Forget the visuals and drama of the drug bust, say many kids. The reality for most of them is quite different. I don't really see any drugs on campus, and I think it's good that they're cleaning up the schools. You know, five or six kids out of 3,000, and well, that's five or six too many. It's not 50 or 60 or 70 or 80. I Chemistry teacher Ron Vincent says many kids seem to have a very different view of drugs these days. Back in the 60s and 70s, it was cool. It's now regarded as one of my students said, these people are stupid. No, none of my friends want to touch it or do anything with them. They think they're bad. Students we talk to agree the drugs are there, and they generally support the campus stings. But they don't want others to think their schools are awash in drugs. But it really is not nearly as serious as people think. Well, that was Dave Marcus reporting, apparently we're having some technical problems with his live shot today. Many who are arrested will face felony drug charges, suspensions from school as well, and many seniors who will not be able to graduate on schedule as well. A stern message from school administrators today say they hope uh, it hits home for students and their parents. Well, a college student suspected in the death of a newborn baby faces arraignment this afternoon. 20-year-old Gina Rose Grinzel is a Cal State Chico student. Investigators say she gave birth in the bedroom of a sorority house last Friday after hiding her pregnancy. And sadly, the suspect may not have been aware of a state law which allows mothers to surrender babies at hospitals or to authorities. The suspect in the DUI death of a California correctional officer is scheduled to return to court today. Scott Richard St. Pierre has already pleaded not guilty in the death of Jerry Walker. He's being held on $500,000 bail. Walker died in a head-on collision in mid-March. Investigators say just three hours before that crash, St. Pierre had been in jail, charged in another driving under the influence incident. Walker was a Folsom Correctional Officer. St. Pierre faces manslaughter and DUI charges. Our sheriff's investigators in Tuolumne County say they have never seen a gun collection quite like this one. 14 assault rifles were seized recently along with an estimated 50,000 rounds of ammunition. The guns are illegal because they're not registered. Conversion kits to make them fully automatic were also found. They're illegal as well. James King was already suspected of having unlawful sex with a minor when the guns and ammo were found. All the ammunition along with the magazines. 
high capacity magazines, anywhere from 35 to 75 rounds of each magazine. That's what's so fearful for law enforcement. Now, according to investigators, King would not say why he gathered the guns and ammo in the first place. He's also charged with having hundreds of steroids. King is not in custody. He was able to post bail. California's fiscal crisis has trickled down to hundreds of California school districts, meaning slim pickings for those people who are searching for teaching jobs. Hundreds of people showed up for an education job fair at Sacramento State University on Monday. At a time when many schools are laying people off, organizers maintain only districts offering positions were invited to attend. 24-year-old Laura Remedios made the rounds and passed out her resume, but few recruiters were interested because she wants to be an art teacher. And during tough times, art programs are among the first to go. Many people are just telling me right now to apply online and see if there's a job opening and wait until it's posted, but right now I haven't found one that has an opening, so it's looking kind of blink for me. A few out-of-state school districts showed up at the job fair with plenty of jobs, but lines were longest at districts around the Sacramento Valley. Most jobs were being offered in uh, math, English, and special education as well. Most nights, he brings you the day's headlines, oftentimes with a witty remark. Now it seems the image of News 10's Dale Shornack has become a pretty hot commodity all over town. All morning long, calls have been flooding into News 10 with requests for an autographed photo of Dale. This is just part of the excitement. A steady flow of people showed up at our Broadway studios this morning to get a photo of Dale. Why, you ask? Well... This is part of a contest through a local radio station, Radio Station 98 Rock. In fact, Dale Shornack's picture is on the list of several things listeners are after as a part of a scavenger hunt for a $15,000 prize. You can pick up a photo from our studios between 8.30 and 5.30, Monday through Friday, or there's a picture of Dale on our website at news10.net. I've got mine right here. Monica, do you have yours? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Hundreds, I would have to say, of phone calls came into the newsroom today between like 7.30 and 9.30 today. I must be low on the pecking pole because I haven't gotten that yet. So you're you're a little higher on the food chain, apparently. Yeah, yeah nobody called for your photo either, so I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Although with this weather lately, maybe they will. Well, there's still time. All right, today we are going to see mostly sunny skies ahead in our forecast. Highs will reach right around 70. Slightly warmer, though, as we head through the rest of our work week. I'll step aside, and you can take a look at that temperature. Currently in Sacramento, we're at 57. Southeast wind at 2 miles per hour, 64% humidity. Live at Tahoe, we've got blue skies there as well. Our temperature is starting to warm. We're at 51 degrees. North wind at 2 miles per hour and 20% humidity. Now on to some other area temperatures as we take a live look at Fairfield. A little haze in the air, and that's how we started off the morning. Still have a little bit of a, a marine influence in the region, so that is keeping local humidities higher. In Lake Tahoe, though, our humidity is still fairly low with that north wind. Fairfield right now is at 55, Folsom 59. Marysville at 56, Lincoln 57, and Turlock checks in at 59. We'll take a look at that warming trend through the rest of our work week, find out how, how warm it's going to get, and also take a peek at that Easter forecast. Right now, back to Cornell. we got to have warm weather for Easter egg hunts, right? That's right. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Monica. Well, still ahead, Battlefield Iraq. More Americans become casualties as U.S. forces try to lock down enemy territory. And as if she needs more luck, the mother of a famed pop singer hits it big at the slots in Atlantic City. That story coming up next. Hi, I'm News 10's Dale Shornack. One of the things I used to hear from people is that so much in the news is bad. But honestly, I don't hear that as much anymore. Not from people who watch News 10. Because at News 10, we look for good news happening in our communities. There's a reason we can go out every day and find good news. It's because there are always good people. Join me for Good News, Good People. Americans. An Iraqi judge has issued a warrant for his arrest on a different charge, but his militia promises an even bloodier fight if he's taken into custody. This morning, President Bush's top civilian in Iraq followed his boss's lead and said he's ready to transfer power to the Iraqis within two months. Uh, we'll see this through and, and we'll have some up days and some down days between now and June 30th, but we'll get there. Central Command is looking into how to rotate troops within Iraq to respond to the new areas of instability. Commanders must also deal with the fact that in the next few weeks, 20,000 troops are supposed to return home. Sonia Crawford, ABC News, Washington.
Should police dogs be used to search a vehicle for drugs when a motorist is pulled over for a traffic violation? The U.S. Supreme Court plans to review the debate between police power and protection from unreasonable search and seizure. The justices will decide if authorities can use dogs to look for drugs when a driver is stopped and police have no reason to suspect illegal activity. The debate stems from an Illinois case where police walked a dog around uh, outside of a motorist car, a police dog that is. A court ruled police acted improperly in that case. Well, she soared to stardom as an actress and singer and dancer, and now word that Jennifer Lopez's mom has hit it big in Atlantic City. Guadalupe Lopez reportedly won $2.4 million on Wheel of Fortune slot machine on Saturday night in New Jersey. Casino spokesperson denied knowing of a relationship between Lopez and the jackpot winner. Two magazines, though, US, Us Weekly, rather, and People are reporting that the winner is indeed J-Lo's mom. Wow. Well, the debilitating disease of macular degeneration can rob victims of eyesight. Now there's new hope for fighting the condition. Learn more in our medical breakthrough, and that is coming up next. England that is still dealing with almost wintry type of weather, with showers expected throughout much of the Great Lakes region, and some cold weather behind a cold front that moved through yesterday throughout New England. In the Bay Area today, highs will be in the upper 50s for San Francisco. West wind about 5 to 15 miles per hour. In the Coastal Valley and Delta area, expect some sunshine today with highs near 70. We'll be in the 70s through throughout the northern San Joaquin Valley, not only today, but through tomorrow before we start to see those temperatures bump up to the 80s, right around 70 for Elk Grove, Galt, even into Natomas and Folsom. For Yuba City, 72 today, as well as Lincoln, Auburn up to 66. Other foothill locations will see the sunshine and highs in the 60s. The Lake Tahoe forecast calls for partly cloudy conditions with a high of 56, Truckee up to 58. What are we expecting for that seven-day forecast? Well, it is 80s by Thursday, wow. Friday, and Saturday, Easter Sunday, 79, a dry weather forecast with mostly sunny skies. Good Friday. looks beautiful, 84. Yes, it does, absolutely. Wow. Thanks, Monica. You're welcome. Here's a look at what's coming up uh, tomorrow on News 10 Midday. Sutter pediatrician Dr. Ravinder Kara will be here to take your phone calls. We'll hear more about the show called My Name Will Always Be Alice. Veterinarian Melissa Gates will take your calls uh, regarding introducing an adult pet into the household. And we'll learn about a recipe for apple mustard glazed pork tenderloin. Got a big show that's tomorrow <laughs> on News 10 Midday. We, well, we got a have big some, dog over here, I know too. somebody that might like that pork tenderloin. Yeah, is exactly. Snow from the SPCA. This is Snow, and Snow is a happy, sweet dog who loves to shower you with kisses. Yeah. He is a mix. He's a Terrier American Stafford, Staffordshire mix, and he's playful with, and likes other dogs, but might not be the best pet for a home with cats. Mm -hmm. He also probably would be best suited in a household with children who are 12 years and older. So if you'd like more information, Information on snow, call 916-383-PETS or go to our website where we have a link to the SPCA information. He's got a good temperament and he looks like a good dog and very friendly He well. is. He's a frisky pet. Exactly. So good luck, Snow. <laughs> right. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.